Hi, and uh, welcome to today's session. My name is Ryan Holland. I'm the Principal Industry Specialist for the External Security Services team. And today's session is on best practices for data discovery with the new Amazon Macy. In this session, we're going to cover four different topics. So we're first going to look at and do a brief overview of some of the key features and functionality in Amazon Macy for those who might be new to the service. We'll also touch on some of the ways that customers can visualize and operationalize the findings that Amazon Macy makes and share some of the best practices that we found that have worked with our customers in the field over the last year since we relaunched Macy, including some ways that you can automate response to the detection of sensitive data or the change in the way your buckets are secured uh, in order to trigger new uh, sensitive data detections or to change the security settings on your buckets in response to those changes. So for those of you who might not be very familiar with Macy, Macy is a data protection and data privacy service that uses machine learning and uh, pattern matching to help identify sensitive data within your S3 buckets. It also provides continuous monitoring and visibility into how you're using S3 across all of your accounts in your organization as well as how those buckets are configured from a security posture standpoint. So if we dig into that a little deeper, the very first thing that we're providing is visibility. And this visibility is really important, especially as you start to scale your use of S3 across hundreds or even thousands of accounts. Being able to have a central console where you can view all of the buckets that you have in S3 and monitor how those buckets are configured from some key security aspects in order to determine whether or not they meet the different policies that you have in place, or if these buckets are ones that you want to ensure do not have sensitive data in them, which is really the second part, right? So once you identify a bucket or a set of buckets that you need to know whether or not those buckets contain sensitive data, you can then go and create an inspection job. These jobs will go and analyze all the objects within your S3 bucket to identify any objects that contain sensitive data. And we do this centrally managed and at scale. So one of the great things about all of our ESS services now is this integration that we have with AWS organizations that leverages a functionality called Delegated Administrator that allows you to delegate an account in your organization the ability to manage a particular service and to do that at scale. Lastly, as we'll see when we get some of the best practices part of the presentation, because all of our findings are emitted out through EventBridge, you are capable of taking automated response, be, it, be that an alert or a notification, or to take some sort of remediation action against uh, an object or a bucket in response to a finding. So if we start at the initial setup and how you do scalable and centralized management uh, is with a feature that we call delegated administrator. And in the product, you'll see this listed as an administrator and member setup. And the first step here does require that you have access to the organization management account in order to delegate permissions to another account in your organization to manage Macy. This is a one-time step. And once you delegate the administration of Macy, typically to an account that'll be owned or managed by a data privacy or a data governance or your security team, they'll now have the ability to add all of the other existing accounts within the organization to that administrator account. And so they can be centralized managed. We also include a feature called auto-enable. Auto-enable removes any additional bootstrapping or configuration when you create a new account or add a new account to your organization. With auto-enable, every time an account is created in the organization, or if a new one is, joins the organization, it'll automatically have Macy turned on, and it'll automatically be made a member to the delegated administrator account that you've designated. This gives you that centralized visibility across all of your accounts to see how those buckets are, that exist and how those buckets are configured. And so we look at this in two different ways. The first one is inventory. And, and this is really important. Again, it's not hard to figure out how many buckets you have in one or two accounts. But if you start sprawling out into hundreds or thousands of accounts, it can be difficult to maintain a consistent inventory across all those accounts. The inventory functionality of Amazon Macy, which is on by default and collects metadata and inventory about all of the buckets across all of the accounts within the organization, you can quickly see how many buckets you have, how many objects you have in total, what the total storage size is. But more importantly, from a security perspective, we also highlight and start to monitor changes to bucket policies or configuration settings 
that could pose potential security issues. Things like, how many of my buckets are publicly accessible? How many of my buckets have default encryption policies or do not have encryption policies? And also, how many of my buckets are accessible or shared in the terms of Macy to an account outside of my organization? And also, am I replicating any of my buckets to accounts that are outside of my organization? So Macy will collect all of this information. It'll give you a nice dashboard that summarizes all of this. But more importantly, we'll also generate security findings that will go out through EventBridge and are also viewable in Security Hub if any of these settings were to change. So if a bucket is made public or it's replicated to an external account or encryption is disabled, all of these events will generate a security finding that you can then take that information and do some sort of automated action or send a notification about that. The other important use case for this inventory and the security metrics that we collect is to help you prioritize which buckets you want to include in a sensitive data discovery job. One of the most important best practices that we try to explain to customers is you do not typically want to point Macy at every bucket across all of your accounts and have it do a sensitive data discovery. When you turn on Amazon Macy, the first 30 days is completely free for the bucket inventory and monitoring. And after that, it's only 10 cents a bucket per month. However, the cost is considerably higher to go and do this sensitive data discovery because we have to actually pick up every object and read all of its contents to understand what is in the object and does it match any of the sensitive data identifiers that we have defined. Because of this, it's important that you prioritize which buckets you want to choose to do sensitive data discovery on. The most important thing to understand is if you have buckets that you know you're storing sensitive data in, you certainly don't want to include them. For one, it's gonna cost you money to have us tell you something you already know, but more importantly also, you're gonna generate a lot of findings because there's gonna be a lot of sensitive data in those buckets, which would make it very difficult to operationalize or to consume those findings down the road. So with that information that we're collecting about this metadata and how those buckets are configured, so there's certain ones of those that are pretty easy, low-hanging fruit for most customers to understand and start with. The public bucket use case is, for a lot of customers, a no-brainer. There's a very easy way in the console to shoot. You can see all of your public buckets across all of the accounts uh, in your organization, and you can create a job to perform a sensitive data discovery on those. You might also want to consider looking at buckets that are shared or replicated to an external party as well. If you leverage tags within your S3 environment, you can also filter and search based on those tags as well, and use that to help inform which buckets you want to scan. For example, if I tag all of my buckets that I know contain sensitive data in a particular way, those are ones I would certainly want to exclude. Other logging buckets that are things from AWS logs, things like flow logs or S3 access logs, for example, are other good candidates that don't necessarily yield very good results when you, when you run a scan on them. They're just gonna be text-based log data. So now that you've kind of filtered out the buckets that you have, you can then prioritize which one of these buckets you want to target for the sensitive data discovery job. In order to do that, you select one or more buckets, and these buckets can be in the same account, or you can also create jobs that span multiple accounts, including up to 500 different buckets. And then you create a job, and when you do that, you get a choice of two different types of jobs. Uh, there's a one-time job, which is a, pretty much exactly what it sounds like. We're gonna do a single pass, scan all of the objects in those buckets, and, and give you the results. However, most customers opt for the scheduled job. And the scheduled job has some benefits over the one-time job in that we're gonna scan everything that exists today. And then every day going forward, we're only gonna scan net new objects. So we're not gonna rescan all the objects in the bucket. We're just gonna scan the objects that were created since the last previous scan, which would be yesterday. At this page, you also get the opportunity to add additional filtering. So you can include or exclude objects based on file extension, file size, date modified, and then now we also recently have added the ability to do prefix-based inclusions or exclusions. So if you have a particular prefix in one of your buckets that you do not want to have Macy analyze, you can exclude that and say if you have certain ones that you want to make sure that you include. After the job is done, you will generate these findings that will tell you what type of data we found. We will only generate date, uh, findings for objects that contain sensitive information. The finding types will be broken down with the type of information that we found based on the identifier. Macy has a large and continually growing set of managed data identifiers that we manage on your behalf to detect common 
sensitive data types. These are in different categories, such as financial data, which could be bank accounts, credit card numbers, um, also personal information like names, addresses, social security numbers, passports, other national ID cards across a number of different countries. Medical data that's related to healthcare, as well as credentialed information like AWS access and secret keys or private keys. We also recognize that while we're going to continue to improve and grow the set of managed data detections that we have, there's always, always going to be certain sets of sensitive data that are unique to individual customer. For example, how you store your employee IDs or customer IDs or internal project code names that are very unique to you and don't make sense for us to have as a managed data detection, we give you the opportunity to create custom data identifiers. And you do these by creating a regular expression and giving it any keywords if you'd like to, and then send those uh, in our console, and we will apply those custom data identifiers to the scan jobs when they run, and there's no additional cost for that. So very good best practice to make sure that you collect the set of custom data identifiers that you think will be relevant to your data types before you run your jobs. So that way you don't have to rerun them a second time. And then as I mentioned, at the output of this is gonna be findings. And a finding will have one finding per object, regardless of how many different types of sensitive data we found in them. But you only get one, one finding per object if there is sensitive data. For objects that do not contain sensitive data, they do not generate a finding. These findings are viewable in our console. They are also sent out CloudWatch events. And that kind of brings us to the next section, which is how can I take these findings and visualize them or store them long-term longer than we have them in the console? And so the first thing is to understand the two different types of findings. Uh, we have policy findings, and these are the ones for the configuration settings that we talked about in the beginning, right? Someone making a bucket public or disabling block public access or sharing a bucket externally. These will all create policy findings, and we'll see how we can use these later to trigger automated responses. For sensitive data findings, again, this is one per object that can, where we found sensitive data. And these finding types will be personal, financial, credentials, multiple, or custom identifiers. And it'll be a multiple uh, finding type if there is, for example, both personal and financial information within the same object. So again, we don't generate a finding for each detection. It's just one finding per object that contains sensitive data. Objects that do not contain sensitive data do not generate any findings at all. And again, these all get sent out to uh, EventBridge. And what EventBridge allows us to do is to connect that to Kinesis Data Firehose and have Kinesis Data Firehose send them directly into Elasticsearch. And then from Elasticsearch, I can visualize these in Kibana. So for this particular example here, we built a sample dashboard that is connected through that flow with an EventBridge rule looking for the Macy uh, finding types sending them to the Kinesis Firehose, Firehose sends them directly to Elasticsearch. And then on top of that, I just built a simple dashboard that allows me to see policy findings by the different accounts. So I can quickly see any change in uh, policy findings across all of my accounts, uh, a heat map that shows me the number of net new detections each day over time. So I can kind of uh, get an understanding, are there buckets that over time I'm seeing more and more additional sensitive data being added to them each time, each day when the new scan runs? And then, of course, my top 20 buckets uh, by overall findings. Uh, one of the first things that you would look on this for the, the top findings is the bucket that has the, the largest amount of sensitive data is probably a bucket that I, first of all, want to make sure I have very tight security on, but it seems to have a very large amount of sensitive data in that bucket. It's probably not a bucket I necessarily need to continue scanning with Macy from a, a cost standpoint. I obviously know there's sensitive data in there, so rescanning all the net new sensitive data might not make sense especially if that's a bucket where you expect to find sensitive data. So looking at these dashboards could be an, an interesting way of identifying buckets that you maybe have accepted or should expect sensitive data to be in, make sure that they're properly secured and you have the right policies tied around them, and then stop scanning them in the future. The, the second output that Macy has, in addition to what goes out of EventBridge, is what we refer to in the console as the detailed classification results. So this is in addition to the findings. We also write a copy to S3. And the difference between what we write to S3 in the detailed classification result and what gets sent out event bridge is two things. First, in the findings, we include up to 15 locations of where we found sensitive data in the object. 
And this could be a line number, it could be a cell number in an Excel, or a field in a, in a parquet or JSON file. For the detailed result, we include up to 1,000. And we do that because with EventBridge, there's a limited amount of space that we can use in the payload. And with S3, obviously, we, we, we don't have that restriction. The other difference that in the detailed classification result is unlike findings, which we only generate if there is a detection, if we find sensitive data, what we write to S3 in the detailed re result is more of an audit log. So every object that we attempted will be written a result into S3. So if there's an object that we scan and it does not contain sensitive data, we will write that out to S3 that yes, as part of this job on this date, it was scanned and we, we, we did not detect any sensitive data. So this can be very useful from an audit perspective if you need to show that yes, you did in fact check certain files to ensure that they didn't contain sensitive data. The detailed report will also include information about whether or not a file was skipped because it wasn't supported or if there was a permission issue with the encryption keys. So the second dashboard that we'll show an example here is I used Athena on top of that S3 data to generate a QuickSight dashboard. And this allows me to see some of the files that were skipped and, and why they were skipped. So whether it was a permissions issue, which means I need to probably go and update my KMS key policy in order to allow Macy access to those objects, or if it was just skipped because it's an unsupported file type, like a picture or a movie uh, or an executable file. And then I can also do the kind of the detection types by different buckets. So you can see I also have a part of this graph where I'm looking at the personal information versus financial information across a number of different buckets. So beyond visualizing the output, we can also use these findings in order to take some automated response, either through notifications or a more assertive remediation path. So if I give an example, and I, we're gonna use for these examples some of these different policy setting findings. So these policy findings, in this case here, we have for making a bucket public, making it replicated to an external account, or sharing it with an external account by giving them permission in the bucket policy or the ACO. In this case, we're gonna create an event bridge rule that's gonna evaluate and if it matches in those finding types, send it to a step function. And the step function is gonna allow me to do uh, some checks against both the bucket in question and the finding that's been generated. So in this case, I've configured my environment that when I scan a bucket with Macy, I'm tagging the bucket that it was scanned. So I have a, a scan equals true, and I'm also scanning the result. So if my job runs on the bucket, and there was no sensitive data identified, I mark it as PII equals false. So in this case, I'm just simply gonna send a notification to make sure that someone in the security or the governance team knows that this bucket that was not public before is now publicly accessible or is now being replicated or, or shared to an external account. But at least we have the confidence that there's no sensitive data in the bucket. If we instead look at a slightly different one where I'm sharing it externally, but in this case, the scan was true, so we know we've scanned it, and we also know that there's sensitive data in this bucket. And this bucket has now just been shared to an external third party that's uh, part of an account that I don't own. So in this case, I can take a more assertive remediation step, like revoking that share by modifying the bucket policy or the bucket ACL to revert that, and then send a notification to the bucket owner and possibly security team to alert them that this took place. Another example, again, if I make a bucket public, and this, the same thing happens. If it's been scanned and I know there's PII, we can immediately revoke that bucket being made public and then still send a notification. So that works for both the bucket being made public or bucket being shared externally. There's then the case where I might not know yet. So this could be a bucket that has been shared or it's replicated or made public and it has not been scanned. So in this case, the step function is gonna get a little bit more complicated. The first thing it's gonna do is create a job. So we're gonna create a job uh, to scan that bucket, and then pull for the results of that scan job. Once the job completes, it will evaluate whether or not there was any sensitive data detections for that bucket and update the, the tag. If the tag was true, then we're gonna revoke the share and send a notification. If the scan was false, then you might just go and do just a notification. So those are some ways that we see customers automating their response and notification from Amazon Macy uh, based on the different types of scans that are taking place in their environment. And this really helps empower a few, few key use cases. So a lot of our names, our customers with Macy tend to be in compliance, security, or governance. And with data privacy and data governance really go hand in hand. And Macy really helps those customers understand where their sensitive data is 
and where it's not, and then also how the buckets that do contain that sensitive data are configured from a security standpoint, and then to make sure that that's being continuously monitored. The other use case, again, is just for regular old security teams. So having that continuous monitoring on those buckets and then also being able to be alerted if any sensitive data is found in a bucket, like a public bucket, really helps the data privacy and data security teams as well. And then I would say lastly, one of our other use cases where Macy has shown a lot of promise with a lot of customers is in the data migration use case. So when customers are moving large data sets, possibly from on-prem into AWS, having that data first stop in S3 and be scanned by Macy allows you to understand and know if there's any sensitive data in that data set before you put it into your different accounts. So you may have a data lake or a database, for example, and you wanna make sure that that database doesn't contain sensitive data before you put it into a developer's account for them to use or for your data scientists to use for training. These are all use cases where Macy can make sure that before you share that data out to other users or you migrate it to other accounts, that there's no sensitive data in there. Or if there is, at least now you know and you can put the appropriate security controls on that data wherever it lands. Lastly, I would just say Macy can, is very easy to get started with, as I talked about earlier with the delegated administrator. Uh, you can quickly go get started in a couple clicks. And the bucket evaluation and monitoring is free for the first 30 months, for all, or first 30 days, sorry, for all of your accounts. And every account includes the first one gigabyte of sensitive data discovery included for free as well. So thank you for joining today's session and do please complete the survey. This is how we know uh, where we can improve and we definitely want to hear your feedback. Thank you.